Hello, uh, my name is Sudhir Zuchi. I'm, I'm Director of Policy and Strategy for UL in South Asia. A message to the prospective students uh, who are looking for options in, in medical, in pharma, in engineering across streams, um, in agriculture. Uh, I was completely mesmerized uh, with, with the campus infrastructure uh, in terms of and how they are sort of connecting the environment and plus the modern infrastructure uh, together which gives a feeling of you know a, a campus which is a state of art campus i feel the the personal attention uh, which uh, which the vice chancellor uh, which the faculty is taking in terms of uh, working engaging together the students uh, so that you know they can uh, they can bring up their careers so that they are corporate ready is absolutely absolutely deeply appreciated uh, good afternoon, sir. My name is Rajneesh Tiwari, and on behalf of uh, the Thangka Mahabir University in Muradabad, I would like to welcome you. And uh, I mean, you have really spent a uh, couple of hours here in our campus. So, what is your experience? Would like to really enlighten us with uh, your experience at DMU. So, I think it has been a great experience uh, being among the students, uh, being a, such a fantastic campus. I was really, really happy to uh, go around the camp campus, and the, the feel and the aura, I would say. It's really, really uh, awesome uh, because I think that the, the, the feel that you get across in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the faculty, in terms of uh, the focus on extracurricular activities. I mean, because the education goes along with, with sports, extracurricular activities, um, and, and that's called creates a sportsmanship. I think that was fantastic. Um, kudos uh, and re really deeply appreciate the efforts being put into this institution, which has started almost uh, in 2008, I would say. Um, 2001 um, and now being being set up across multidisciplinary right from medical to management to uh, pharmacy and adding on um, with a with a with a more contemporary and latest state of art curriculum I think I'm, I'm really really happy to see see this what what is being created at this university so I was really thrilled uh, to see the enthusiasm level of our students when they were interacting with you so I mean uh, a few lines about uh, our students I think uh, the kind of energy which, I, which these students exude, because they are going to be tomorrow, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, they're going to serve the society, uh, they're going to be working with different corporations, uh, they might also go, go in research and academia as well. Uh, so I think the kind of, kind of questions which are coming, the kind of energy which I would, uh, I would see in the news, it was really infectious um, in the sense that I was really, really happy to see that kind of, a, uh, you know, energy levels which definitely speaks volumes about uh, how the, the students are being groomed, not only academically, but also in terms of uh, in developing their soft skills and making them ready uh, to sort of go uh, supporting the corporate. Uh, sir, we always keep on hearing uh, from corporate uh, officials and their delegates that uh, we, if we are really interested to really uh, make our students ready to be deployed professionals, uh, we have to really bridge the gap in between uh, the academia and industry. So how do you think that we being an institution can really, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, steps we can take from our side to bridge this gap? So, you know, after time these questions are being asked. I would, I would also sometimes feel that we as industry to a certain extent also fail not to approach to the, to the academia. Because at the end of the day, why this workforce is going to come for future? I think we always talk about industry academia, interlinkages. Uh, I think we have to move much faster on this. I think the industry will have to take a much faster step than, it, than academia coming to us. And therefore, I think, I think if industry needs a workforce, a technical workforce, the way India is growing, the way uh, infrastructure in this country is growing, the way we need a skilled workforce, the industry will have to come forthcoming. And that's why more and more industry academia partnership has to be created. I think the other part from the what can be done from academia is that we need to have more and more research-based projects. We need to give more exposure to the industry. And that's very critical. If that is not happening, uh, then there would be that gap. So the research, in fact, says that for any fresh air to get absorbed in industry, it takes almost nine months to get him up to that speed. And therefore, if, if, if it adds to resources, it adds to cost, and if it also you know, adds to other, other costs in terms of uh, skilling, reskilling. But if you're able to bridge that gap of nine months by the time he's ready, uh, I think we'll be able to do a great job, not only from, from, from the academia perspective, but also from how we're able to serve the country. So gone are the days when the companies uh, used to talk much about uh, talent, I mean, recruitment. 
But right now in 21st century, we are in VUCA world that is quite volatile in nature. Things are changing at a very rapid speed, right? I mean, uncertain things are happening right now in market and post-COVID era, things are changed a lot. So, I mean, uh, how do you look at this thing, uh, recruitment, uh, from recruitment to talent acquisition and retention part? So, um, in terms of um, uh, talent acquisition, retention and attrition, uh, so I think, I think uh, COVID has completely transformed the whole um, work culture. Exactly. We are going to have a hybrid model of working. We can't go, um, I mean, even if you see some of the best uh, known uh, tech companies or for that matter other companies, they are looking for a hybrid mode. And I think, I think we'll have to adjust to the, to the expectation of the newcomers, the young graduates who come to the corporate, uh, in terms of giving that kind of an environment, not only from, from, from how they are able to take care of balance, their work-life balance, that's very, very critical. Because nowadays, the new generation is, has got ample amount of choices all across. And therefore, the, the way the new work culture is going, it has to be, high, uh, it has to be hybrid. You have to take care of their work-life balance. You have to create opportunities for them to grow. You have to give them an environment where there is, there is more openness, transparency, um, and of course, giving them opportunities to grow. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for coming all the way in and uh, really you know, spending your valuable, precious time with us and enlightening our students. Thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you so much. It was an honor and privilege for me personally uh, to be here. And thanks to, thanks to the entire faculty, the vice chancellor, and of course, to the, uh, to the promoters of this institution. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.